George S. Jones currently serves as president of WAEN-TV here in Atlanta, Georgia. Mr. Jones has been developing television networks for others for over 15 years. This has afforded him experience in every area of television networking. Fueled by his aspirations to contribute to community development and to assist with the growth of small businesses, he later came up with the idea to develop a worldwide television network that would impact local communities. Thus, WAEN-TV was born. Mr. Jones' educational achievements have aided him tremendously in his role as leader of this organization. In 1975, he received his Bachelor of Arts in Mass Communication from Francis Marion College while concurrently earning an associate degree as an electrician from Williamsburg Technical College. Mr. Jones has produced several special functions for many community churches and nonprofit organizations. One of his most recent successes was the production of the first 100 Black Men of Atlanta banquet where his work was greatly applauded. George also displays his versatility with the production of music videos. Included in his resume, you will find a number of successful music artists, including former So So Deaf recording artist Chris Kelly of the famed hip hop duo Chris Cross. about 30 grapefruit a day. Is that the Mayo Clinic or the Weight Watchers diet? I think it's the grapefruit growers diet. <laughs> Good morning, breakfast clubbers. Good morning. Good morning. Hope you had a wonderful weekend. Because it's going to be a terrible week. Why do you say that? Because I just found a hair in my orange juice. Anytime there's a hair in your orange juice, first thing Monday morning, it's going to be a terrible week. Mr. Kaufman, I've got to talk to you. You see? I am not going to go through another week trying to teach a history class with Harvey Butcher in it. Now, either he goes or I go. Sit down, Mr. Walters. <laughs> Would you like a little orange juice? Thank you. I've already had mine. Miss McIntyre, you familiar with Harvey Butcher? Oh, yes, I am. I've had him in for counseling about a dozen times. But I haven't been able to get through to him. Nobody can. I don't believe that. That's because you don't know him. He's not in your American history class. Good morning, everybody. May I join you? Oh, sure, right. sit down. Miss McIntyre, do you think we should consider our owing Harvey Butcher? Well, I guess it's come to that. I agree. W what's our owing? RO is the new term for SA. SA? Social adjustment. RO means readjustment opportunity. 
which is just another phony way of saying. We're going to throw him out. Transfer him to another school. Sometimes the shock of changing the environment helps to straighten a kid out. But most times it doesn't. It's really admitting we've given up on the kid. Well, we can't give up on the kid. Occasionally we do give up on a kid. And if anybody deserves being given up on, it's Harvey Butcher. What's his problem? If you knew him, you wouldn't ask. He's disruptive, insolent, loud and rude. He is going to get a gold pin for perfect attendance in the detention room. So what's to be accomplished by sending him to another school? What if he doesn't straighten out there? What then? He gets expelled. Permanently. You wouldn't be so ready to stand up for him, Mr. Dixon, if he were in your history class. We could handle him, couldn't we, Mr. Dixon? Take it easy, Alice. Hold on a second. Miss, um, uh, has the beginnings of a very interesting idea here. Now, Mr. Walters would like to get rid of Harvey Butcher. And Mr. Dixon would like to give him another chance. Isn't that right, Mr. Dixon? Right. Thank you. Now. It should be a very simple matter to rearrange Butcher's schedule so that he can be in your American history class. Oh, don't go to any trouble on my account. Oh, it's no trouble at all. Thank you. <laughs> We've got 15 more minutes. Harvey Butcher, and I'd like you to know it's an honor and a pleasure to be in your history class, Mr. Mason. Dixon! Oh, of course. Well, you can see why I made the mistake. Mason, Dixon. <laughs> oh! This class is taking a test. Oh? Best of luck, everybody. <laughs> You've got 12 minutes left. I'm sorry, sir. I did want to make an impression on you. Oh, you have. <laughs> now sit down until the bell. Take any desk you like. What are you doing? <laughs> well, you said I could take anyone I like. I like this one. <laughs> no. Second thought, I like this one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's enough. Where are you going? To the detention room. I thought I'd volunteer and save you the trouble. <laughs> Miss Johnson, take over. Right. I mean take over the class. Oh. <laughs> Mr. Butcher. Sir? They'll be expecting me in the detention room. If I don't show up, they'll think something happened to me. You can send them a note telling them that you're being held prisoner by Mr. Mason in room 222. <laughs> Now, I want to know why you came to class 30 minutes late. I know you've got a good explanation. I do? I'd sure like to hear it then. I'll tell you what. You go back in the class and you think of an excuse that will satisfy both of us. I think you're starting to make progress with him. Hi, Joellen. Hi, Harvey. How things go in Walter's history class without me today? We're sure quiet. We missed you. I bet Walter's didn't. Well, we did. It was pretty quiet without you. I guess I do make a lot of noise sometimes. Especially when I fall down. <laughs> At least we had some fun for a while. Yeah. What would a history class be without a few laughs? One time I remember... What's that, Joellen? Oh, hi, Carl. Carl, do you know Harvey? Harvey Butcher, Carl Brenner. Hi. Hi. Harvey used to be in my history class. Well, let's go, Joan. Everybody's waiting. Okay. So long, Carl. For sure, mission history. Sure you will. Hi, Harvey. Hi, Harvey. Oh, hi, folks. Something wrong? Wrong? On a day like today, what could be wrong? Look, I'd like to stay and spend a little time with you people, but I've got to be spreading myself around. I'm very big around here, you know. In fact, I'm very big around everywhere. 
here, here, and here. Oh, well, everybody loves a fat boy, right? Works at it, doesn't he? He's got a lot of energy, all right. Sure like to do something with it. Hey, where's my test? What'd you do, burn it? No. I thought I'd give the class a treat this morning and let you read yours aloud. <laughs> hey, what's this, a B minus? Oh, this paper is an F if I ever saw one. And I've seen quite a few. <laughs> Sorry to bring your average up, Harvey, but the grade stands. Sit down. Oh, thanks. As you recall, the question was to show how Benjamin Franklin would fit into today's society. Fade in. The loan department of Liberty Bell Savings and Loan. The vice president, sitting at his desk, glances up, sees a man with shoulder-length hair and rectangular glasses standing at the counter. I thought I said no hippies in here. It's <laughs> my next appointment. Very well, send him in. Have the guard keep an eye on him. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Franklin. Welcome to Liberty Bell. That's a nice kite you're carrying. Is there any particular reason why you have a key tied to the string? <laughs> you're waiting for the next thunderstorm so you can go out and fly it. <laughs> have the guard move down this way in case I need him. <laughs> now, what may we do for you, Mr. Franklin? Uh, you're applying for a loan so you can keep publishing your almanac. May I see your application form, please? Printer, writer, inventor, philosopher, statesman, scientist. Can't you hold a job, Mr. Franklin? <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's funny, I like that. Who wrote that? It's very it's funny. Harvey Butcher. Harvey Butcher? You gave him a B minus. Why not? Well, because that's not a proper essay. He's ridiculing the assignment. He's got most of the facts. To write that, you have to know the subject. Well, it's your business if you want to pander to that sort of thing. What do you think, Bill? If I were this kid's creative writing teacher, I'd give him an A. I'm glad to hear you say that. Because I want you to offer him a job on the school paper. Oh, now, wait a minute. Your paper hasn't had a humor column in three years. Harvey Butcher could do one for you. Uh-uh. I'm having enough problems without a humor column. What kind of problems? Uh, once was a time when the kids who ran the high school newspapers were cooperative, pro-administration types who wrote daring editorials about uh, school spirit and uh, litter bugs. But now, now I get the rebels, the militants, free speechers. I spend most of my time trying to find the dirty words they conceal in the backgrounds of their drawings. Well, you missed a beauty last week. Oh, thanks for reminding me. They crossed me up. They made it so big I missed it with my magnifying glass. Bill, the kid who wrote this needs help. Hmm. He's going to be thrown out of school unless he shapes up. But he doesn't think there's anything to shape up for. I want to give him something. That column. He isn't worth the trouble, believe me. Okay, I'll do it. I didn't know I was so persuasive. It wasn't you who sold me. It was him. Hey, Neil. This is Harvey Butcher. This here is Neil Kovac, our editor. Hi. Why do you read this man's stuff? He's out of sight. Well, I have to have a masthead made up, so uh, you better think of a name for your column. Name. How about Fred? <laughs> Take any desk that's empty. Oh, and I'll need 500 words minimum from you by Thursday. Oh, I'd better get started then. I only know 400 words. <laughs> get around, baby. I think I'm gonna need your support. Come on, Harvey. Sit right there. See you later. You've attracted my attention. So? Well, it's a pleasure to watch someone who does their job really well. I mean, the graceful way you dip your brush into that gunk and then stroke it on, it's beautiful. Look, we have a lot of work to do around here. We don't need any clowns. 
I was only trying to... You know, for a humor columnist, you don't look very happy. That's the way it is with us funny guys sometimes. All the laughter and gaiety is inside. You got time for the junior class advisor? Come in, come in. Have you read this Butcher Kid's column in the blue and gold yet? Very funny stuff. Listen to this. Dateline Whitman High School, October 3rd. Militant students today took over the school cafeteria, but gave up when the dietitian threatened to serve them lunch. <laughs> now, that's what I call social satire. That's what I call a public service. <laughs> oh, Pete, I am happy to report that Harvey Butcher's attendance in the detention room has dropped off about 75%. Good. Maybe he just needed a nudge in the right direction. I came in to get your okay to have another junior class achievement dinner. This time I want to take the kids to work on the blue and gold. I don't know, Pete. Those things are getting expensive. Look, you let me take the juniors from the football team, the class officers, club presidents. These kids work just as hard. Maybe you could have it here in the teacher's cafeteria. It's supposed to be a reward, not a punishment. Well, maybe you could tell them you're going to have it here and then call it off at the last minute. That would seem like a reward. <laughs> oh, all right, go ahead. But don't spend too much. Thank you. What do you mean George Washington was unpopular? Wasn't he called the father of our country? Helen. Yes, but there sure were a lot of people who didn't agree with him, like what he said in his farewell address. Well, tell me what he said. Harvey? Well... Mainly, he spoke about partisanship in America, sectionalism, and that we should avoid foreign entanglements. Look, I don't have time for the funny stuff anymore. I mean, I'm not going to give you my material free when I can use it in my column. <laughs> Read chapter 16 tonight. Oh, Harvey. Very funny column yesterday. Even Mr. Kaufman liked it. I guess I'm gonna have to aim a little higher then. <laughs> oh, Harvey, we're having a dinner Friday for the juniors on the Blue and Gold staff. Maybe you can make it? Sure. Sure, I'd like that. It's at Emilio's restaurant. And bring a date if you like. A date? No, I've been saving it for you. <laughs> You're in Mr. Dixon's first period history class, aren't you? Yeah. So am I. I know. You're Harvey Butcher. And you're Patty Muller. You're really funny in class. You're too kind, madam. And your new article is hysterical. I mean, everybody's talking about how funny it is. For once they're right. <laughs> you know, Mr. Dixon is having a dinner for the juniors who are on the staff of the paper. And I was wondering if... Hi, Patty. Did Norman get around to asking you to the party Friday night? Finally. I was afraid that I was going to end up sitting at home all night with nothing to do. Hello, Connie. Uh, this is Harvey Butcher. In your third period English class. I'm the uh, funny guy. Uh, kind of heavy. Yeah, yeah, that's me. Uh, Connie, I'll tell you why I'm calling. Uh, Mr. Dixon is taking the juniors on the staff of the Blue and Gold to dinner Friday, and... Well, uh, what I was wondering, if you're not doing anything Friday night... Th huh? Oh, yeah. Sure, hair does have to be washed, doesn't it? Bye.
Hello? Darlene Frank of 2344 Claymore Avenue? This is the question, man. Answer this question correctly and you win a fabulous prize. Ready? All right, then, here's the question. Do you have a date Friday night? No? Then you win, Miss Frank, an all-expense-paid night on the town with Harvey Butcher, the well-known humor columnist for the Whitman Blue and Gold. How about that? Yeah, this is Harvey. Can you make it? Your hair. I understand. Well, in, in that case, Darlene, you don't win the big prize, but we're sending you a consolation prize of a bottle of shampoo. Brace yourself, Mr. Dixon. Your big dinner Friday night is going to be a major bomb. Oh? Yeah, that's right. Because I'm not going to be there. Why? I'm not on the blue and gold anymore. I just quit. Harvey! Harvey! Why? Look, I quit, that's all. What's the difference whether I write a crummy column or not? Why come and tell me then if it doesn't make any difference? I just thought you had a right to know since it was your idea in the first place. What happened, Harvey? Nothing happened. Why are you trying to make a big deal out of it? I'm not. I just want to know why this sudden change of attitude. Well, you see, sir, it's this way. I've been offered a better job, see? Humor editor for National Geographic. <laughs> oh, come on, sir. That deserves at least a little smile, doesn't it? Just a teeny little? You can still come Friday if you want to, Harvey. I figure the columns you've written are at least worth the price of dinner for two. Well, you see, sir, now that's another problem. I haven't been able to find the girl to bring to that affair who measures up to my own incredibly high standards. You don't have to have a date, Harvey. You're not suggesting, are you, sir, that I haven't been able to get a date, are you, sir? It just isn't necessary. Isn't necessary? Of course it's necessary. I don't want you going around with the impression that I can't get a date. Fat people do date. You see, that's one of the great things about a school the size of Whitman. No matter how fat and homey you are, there's always somebody bad enough to go out with you. Mr. Dixon, please. I'm not going to be the only one there without a date. Isn't what you're doing to yourself worse? Isn't this worse? Harvey, give yourself a chance. Try accepting yourself as you really are. And maybe other people will. Easy to say. I know it's not easy. But it's up to you. You're funny. But you use it as a shield. Anybody tries to make contact, you give them a joke, make them laugh. But you don't let anybody get too close. Don't be afraid to let people know who you really are. Uh, waiter. Yes, sir. What's this veal piccolini? That's thin slices of veal sautéed in marsala wine and covered with prosciutto ham and mozzarella cheese. It sounds great, but I don't like veal. <laughs> What's the sweet bread? Beats me. <laughs> hey, look who's here. Come on down, Har. We've been waiting for you, man. The food's almost gone. Hey, Har. Hey, 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 what happened to you? Hey, 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 this is the young man that likes a humor column. Hey, Harvey, how come you're late? I almost didn't come at all. 
because I, I couldn't get a date. But somebody told me I should. I really wanted to come anyway. I, I like doing the column. I, li I like being on the staff with, with everybody. So I decided to come tonight. We're glad you did, Harvey. Yeah, Harvey. Glad to have you. Yeah, Harvey. Yeah, really. yeah. 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 wanted to see me. Oh, yes, I got the bill from Emilio's restaurant for your junior class achievement orgy. Which one of the students had the double martini? That was for the waiter. Believe me, he needed it. <laughs> well, how many people were in your party? Let's see, 15 students, Cookshank and his wife, myself. That's 18. You got charged for 19 dinners. Oh, Harvey Butcher had two. <laughs> Fingers. I was a fool. It was good. Had veal scallopini and mushrooms. Tuna surprise or franks and beans, Mr. Kaufman? No surprises for me today, thank you. Franks and beans, honey. Do me a favor, will you? The next time you decide to have one of your achievement dinners? Yes. Please, take me with you. <laughs>
morning. Hey, Coach. Good morning, Bill. How's it going? Excuse me, Chief. Good morning, Charlie. Photographers from the Times will take pictures today. If our cafeteria area is clean, our beautiful students will look even more so. Hi, Pete. Good morning, buddy. Can someone fix the lock on my homeroom? I can hardly open the door. Did you try? I tried. Oh, there'll be no fire drill today. The alarm goes off, ignore it. Unless it's a real fire, of course. <laughs> I have to talk to you later. What room are you going to be in first period? 222, Mr. Kaufman. The band played outside my 11 o'clock window again yesterday. Do I have to keep buying my own chalk? They're ignoring my requisition slips. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Dixon. Your uh, father drive you to work? Uh-huh. I'll drive you home. Lovely. Have a delightful day, Miss McIntyre. You're going to be fine. Wait a minute. Miss McIntyre, everybody. Now, don't forget the 11A PTA meeting tonight. 8 o'clock in Henderson Hall. The cake and cookies. Good morning, Miss McIntyre. Hey, Richie. Taking attendance. What are you doing that for? Look, I don't want an argument. Are you here or not, Abel? Well, yeah, I'm here. What do you think I am? He's here, man. Honest. Allen. Jason Allen. Get yourself together, baby. Ain't it enough you dress like the teacher? Jason Allen, here or not? Uh, oh, yes. Jason's here. <laughs> Anderson. No. Here? <coughs> Howley. I seem to be here. Mary Ann Fuller. Here. Oh, Mr. Dixon. Here? <laughs> Everybody's here today. Thank you, Richie. Oh, don't mention it. <laughs> hey, I just got a great idea. Why don't I teach history? Uh, yeah. Civil War period, 1861 to 1865. Four years. Some historians have spent a lifetime studying those four years. We have a week. How many of you read last night's assignment? The truth? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. See you in a minute. Yes, sir. Al, write the names of these books on the blackboard. Pete Dixon, Alice Johnson. Hi, it's a pleasure. Miss Johnson is here to dry the area behind her ears. She's going to spend the rest of this semester with you, student teaching. And if she's smart, she'll go back to college and change her major. Oh, I really care about teaching. I hope it's a meaningful semester for both of us. Just what you always wanted, right? Meaningful semester? Uh, thank you, Mr. Kaufman. Keep in touch. Bye, Mr. Kaufman. He doesn't like me. But I'm sort of used to it. See, I have this way of getting on people's nerves. But I'm working on it. That's why I think it's very important that you and I establish good human relations. Right. I know I have a lot of middle-class hang-ups. I went to a segregated school. Oh, that's okay. So did I. <laughs> this is Miss Johnson. She's a student teacher. You can have that seat back there, Miss Johnson. Thanks. Here are the titles of three fine books on the Civil War. You'll find them in the school library. The one I like best is Carl Sandburg's The War Years. Okay, now, causes of the Civil War. What were they? Marianne. The prime cause of the Civil War was the Southern states' insistence upon holding slaves. Wait a minute. Straight from the book? Well, yes, sir. Can we go completely by one book? The books disagree. This book is now being revised. This world is being revised, so you'd better start doing some thinking now, some questioning. But, Mr. Dixon, that is the answer. One answer. 
A simple answer. Was it all that simple? According to Marianne, it was a question of morality. The North felt sorry for the slaves. Is that it? Bernie. No. The North was willing to let the South keep slavery. They just didn't want it to spread. No, the abolitionists were in the North and they thought it was immoral. Then how come the Negro in the North couldn't vote? Is that right, Mr. Dixon? Look it up. Richie. Well, the North had to pay their workers, but the South had slaves. Okay, now we're talking morality, politics, economics. Keep it up. Nicole. Can I come half an hour late on Friday? <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about it after class. Helen. The North and the South were both interested in the new territories. Could you say that a little louder? Both sides were after the new land in the West. Richie? Well, the big thing was the South wanted to pull out of the Union, but the North wanted to hold it together. No, Richie, I didn't call on you for an answer. Miss McIntyre wants to see you. Richie, you've been doing so great lately. The top 10% of your class. I sent a letter home to your folks to let them know how happy we were about it. And it came back. No such address. Oh, yeah, sure. Well, I live at 8217, not 8211. Tell me the truth, Richie. You do live in the school district, don't you? And that boy, Richie, so eager, like so many of your students are that way. I feel I learned more this morning than at three years of college. It's not like you were teaching them. It's like you were just talking to them. Oh, excuse me, I just want to get to the coffee, have a meaningful lunch. <laughs> I think it's so significant that you're colored. I meant that as a compliment. Did I use the wrong term? Well, I better ask you straight out. Do you prefer colored or Negro or black? I've always preferred Pete. Hey, that was wonderful. I mean, you really put me down and I deserved it. But see, I don't do these things intentionally. I'm a product of my environment. Get up back. Thanks for lunch. OK. May we join you, Ben? Yes, of course. Ben Stewart, Alice Johnson. Hi. Hi. Student teaching. Huh? You're lucky you didn't get my class. I had to send eight kids to the VP's office this morning. VP? Vice principal. Who can control them? As far as they're concerned, rules are made to be broken. And so are teachers. <laughs> Maybe there are just too many rules. A teacher can't be expected to cope with puberty. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Where are we going? Oh, Ellis, go ahead and finish your lunch. Well, is it what I said before? No, because you know I didn't... No, no, I'll see you in class. I was getting waterlogged right in here. What's happening? Well, it's Richie. Well, I think he may have lied about living in the school district. Hold off from telling Kaufman. Pete, I can't do that. Let me find Richie and talk to him. Hey, have you seen Richie Lane? No. Have you seen Richie Lane? It was over at Clark a while ago. Richie? Not easy to find. I guess you saw Miss McIntyre. That's right. Can I ask you something? Where did you go to high school? Tyler. And I know what you're going to tell me. You can do it, so can I. I'm not going to tell you anything. I'm here to listen, but I want you to be straight with me. Well, I tried to make it there. I tried to get something out of that school. Didn't sound. My friends start coming down on me like I was something weird. And I just couldn't take all that dumping. Plus all that other stuff. Half-day sessions, cops in the hall, fights every time you look up. Okay. You went there and you got over. But I just can't book all those odds. You shouldn't have to. So you just marked down a phony address and came here. 
Oh, but I've been doing real good. Right? Right. Tell me the truth, Mr. Dixon. Are you bringing the word? Am I going to get bounced back there to Tyler? I don't know, Richie. Look, if you just pass him, he won't do it again. You'll have to understand. She was 12 days premature. Sidney Poitier is my favorite actor. He's very good. Very good. He's terrific. Say, uh, you don't teach English, do you? No. American history. Hmm. Because last night I was up reading a terrific book by James Baldwin. Brilliant writer. Any favorite singers? Sammy Davis, Jr. He's very good. What about Frank Sinatra? Oh, uh, he's okay. But no elephants too, right? Exactly. <laughs> Excuse me. You know, I have this fascination for statistics. This is my 3,000th PTA meeting, and I didn't like the first one. <laughs> Could I speak to you a minute, Miss McIntyre? doing? You haven't told Kaufman about Richie yet, have you? No, not yet. Good. Well, why good? Because you're not going to tell him. Pete, don't make up my mind for me. Besides, what are people going to think if they see us off with each other like this? Right now, nothing. In another minute, they're going to think we're having one whale of a fight. Fight by yourself. Don't get me mad. If you don't come with me right now, I'm going to kiss you in front of the entire 11A PTA. <laughs> we'll talk in the morning. You don't want him sent back to Tyler, and neither do I. But what about those 2,000 kids who are stuck there right now? What about them? Richie Lane, we can do something about. What am I doing as the heavy? I'm just doing what I have to do. Sure. Liz McIntyre, all upper middle class. Touch all the bases, follow all the rules. Yes, sir, Mr. Kaufman, we gonna kick Richie out. You don't really believe that, do you? No, honey, I don't. It's just the most powerful argument I know. I figured it was worth a try. Pete, I can't be you. I've got to be me. Maybe that means touching the bases and following all the rules. But that's the way I am. I love the way you are. But I can't hold off telling Kaufman any longer. Understand? No, baby, I don't. Because there's a kid on the line here. You're supposed to be covering the class. What are you doing out here? I'm self-evaluating. Look, for example, on a scale of one to ten, ten being the greatest teacher in the whole world, and a one being a, get him out of here, well, you're an eight, and I'm a two. Twos just don't fill in for eights. <laughs> <laughs> Richie, Richie, I want to see you after class. Okay, Civil War generals. 
Let's get to it. Richard Lane. Come with me, please. Better bring your books. Let's go. Okay, if anyone has anything to say, say it. L. Why'd they pull Richie? Richie doesn't live in this district. We found out, so he has to go back to his old school. That's it. Helen. Yesterday you were saying how things are never that simple. I can't hear you, Helen. Yesterday you were saying how things are never that simple. Today you said that they pulled Richie out because he doesn't live in the district. Isn't that a simple answer? She don't talk loud, but she sure talks good. When you have 3,000 kids in a school, it is simple. It starts getting complicated when you know Richie Lane. Miss Johnson, take over the class. do nothing. Richie had them big ideas, so they just naturally got to come down on him. I've just been in class a day, but I feel like I know many of you already. Now you're going to get a chance to know me. Well, whoopee. <laughs> uh, Civil War generals. Now, I don't know why I'm so interested in that, but you know how some things strike your interest, and before you know it, you're interested. <laughs> anyway, um, Civil War generals were the sort of men... Who, uh, Jason, why are you still standing? Because I'm tired of sitting. I see. Jason, are you trying to frighten me? Didn't know you were so scared. Well, I am. This is the first time I've ever taught a class. And I'm darn scared. You're making things a lot harder for me. What's the point? Come on, sit down. That is not a problem. Let me put it this way. That is not our problem. You have to know Richie. I have to know all these kids, 3,000 of them. See that? Now you made me hollow. <laughs> all right. Time for words of wisdom. Pete, I had to accept a long time ago that I'm a principal, not a social worker. Just check his record. Do you know what his IQ is? And you're a teacher, not a social worker. If you send him back... You're not a social worker, Pete! Liz, tell him he's not a social worker. Right. I'm a teacher. I'm here to teach. But there's a regulation that says I can't teach this kid. That he's got to go to Tyler. And that's wrong. Because I know Tyler. I'm from Tyler. And what they're doing there isn't teaching. It's controlling. Here's our regulations. And I say they stink, Mr. Kaufman. Unless somewhere in all of these pages, there's one rule that says I can teach this kid. If he stayed here, he could end up with a scholarship. If you send him back. Oh, great. You too. Well, of course, me too. Well? You two are going to leave this office thinking that I'm a louse, because that's what I have to be right now. It's part of my civil service examination. It said, can you be a louse? I answered yes, so they made me a principal. <laughs> this must have happened before. 
Don't tell me there's never been a kid in this school from out of the district. Yes, but there were valid reasons. What were they? Like someone wanting to take a course here that he couldn't get at his own school. Well, that doesn't apply. Everything on this boy's schedule he could get at Tyler High. Look for yourself. What would you say if I told you that Richie mentioned to me the other day he wanted to change his program? I would say he had incredible timing. <laughs> and suppose this new subject isn't taught at Tyler, but we teach it here. What then? Okay, I get it. I'm not sure I should, but I do. Bonnie, call downtown. Find out what courses we offer that they don't give at Tyler High. Blessings on you, Seymour Kaufman. <laughs> oh, I've had that kid waiting in the detention room till I could notify his parents. You better get him in here. You just flunked the mouse test. So? I make a lousy louse. <laughs> Richie, come with me. Come on. Mm -hmm. I understand that. All you have to do is take one of these subjects. All right. Thank you very much. Well, there are two subjects. What are they? Basic calculus. I'll take it. Oh, you can't. Well, you haven't had trigonometry yet. What's the other one? What's wrong? This other course. I had kind of a tough time with it myself, Richard. I'm not sure you'd take to it. Oh, sure I would. What's the subject? Hebrew. <laughs> it's a... It, it's a very interesting subject, Richie. Yeah. Sure, Mr. Dixon. I've always wanted to learn Hebrew. Of course you have. Well, anyhow, that's it. The only two courses we offer that they don't. It was bound to be offbeat. Can I go to my next class now? You better. Richard. Good luck. Shalom, Mr. Kaufman. <laughs> I found you. I need help. I mean it. I need help. Oh. Oh, hi. Hey, <laughs> I didn't know you two were socially involved. Uh, Liz and I don't want a lot of gossip going on about us. I won't tell. <laughs> I would have guessed, though. You said you needed help. Oh, it's nothing. Just that I failed as a teacher today, but that's my problem. You go on ahead. I'll see you around. Go on. Go ahead. Come on. Hmm? I'll give you a lift and we can talk about what's bothering you. You sure? I'm sure. Hey, this is swell. You know, Alice, you can't expect to be a great teacher in one day. Oh, I don't. I'm going to give it a week. <laughs> Good idea. I figure, you know, with all the studying that I've been doing in class, have you ever seen him teach a class? It's so fantastic. The kids are just so eager and have such attention, you can't believe if I'm a
23,000 votes. Now, why was Grover Cleveland elected president? There hadn't been a Democratic president since James Buchanan. 1856. Thanks, Al. Okay, the Democrats had been out of office for 24 years. Now, what brought them back in? Bernie. Uh, maybe time for a change. Could be. It worked for the Republicans a few years ago. But how about something more specific? Helen. Oh, sorry, I thought you had your hand up. Marianne. Well, the people were upset because the government was crooked. Why? What had the previous administration done? Richie. They let their big shot pals grab public land. Good, but what else? The really big reason. Anybody. Come on. Something the Republican candidate said that was supposed to have cost him the election. <coughs> Helen. Rome, Romanism and rebellion. What's that? She said, rum, Romanism, and rebellion. Good. Very good, Helen. But I sure would like to help Helen get out of her shell. Yeah, you know, I would too. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Well, aren't you going to ask me why? Why, Mr. Rieger? Because you see before you a free man. You know, you do look different. Already? I knew it. I knew it. Would you be willing to tell us why you're a free man? Because for the first time since forever, I will no longer serve as faculty advisor to the junior class review. Bill, you've always been. Always has just ended. How'd you get away with it? I just told him, that's all. I said, Mr. Kaufman, class night will have to get along without me. But Mr. Rieger, why would you want to give something like that up? I mean, it seems to me that it would be so rewarding. Miss Johnson, you have a lot to learn. That's why I'm a student teacher. I said, Mr. Kaufman, <laughs> examine my life and you'll understand. Up at 6.30 in the morning, a cup of coffee, that long, vicious crawl on the freeway to school, classes 8 to 2.30, conferences, squabbles with pupils, with parents, with, with teachers, just before the long push home. After dinner, 162 papers to correct. Tomorrow's lesson to prepare. Finally, my work done, I stagger off to bed where my wife is always sound asleep. In the morning, she's sarcastic. Time to get up, lover boy. I'm not about to add auditions, rehearsals, songwriting, playwriting to that. But what about class night? Well, who's going to be faculty advisor? That's Mr. Kaufman's problem. As for me. I'd love to take Mr. Rigger's place. Well, so far you're the only volunteer for the job. Well, I'm not exactly Mike Nichols, but I do know my way around the footlights. I have to think about it. And I'm experienced. You know, in my sophomore year in college, I played Lady Sneerwell in School for Scandal. You should have seen me. I was a howl. I bet you were. Well, face the facts, Mr. Kaufman. I'm young and hip, and I can show old Walt Whitman High a class night it'll never forget. I just know it can do it. Okay? I'll get back to you. Okay. Thanks. Now look, you two. I have just had a taste of today's cafeteria special. That means I may have only minutes to live. Now, do you really think I want to spend my last few precious moments discussing Alice Johnson and her problems? I just wanted to tell you a few things about her that you don't know. Alice has already told me more about Alice than I care to know. <laughs> macaroni and cheese. Why is it that every school dietitian insists on macaroni and cheese? It has a great deal of energy. And that's only one of the things I'm afraid of. If there's anything worse than macaroni and cheese, it's tuna fish and noodles. Mr. Kaufman. No. I'm sorry, the answer is no. Believe me, I'd rather say yes. It would make things a lot easier. No, wait a minute. No, no, no. Is that it? The convincing is over? Well, you made up your mind. Yes, but that's no reason for you to quit without really trying. <laughs> Mr. Kaufman. I think Alice would do a lot better job than some teacher you'd have to force into doing it. Maybe. Maybe, though. You know how I hate forcing. Anything else? 
Yes. Her drive, her desire will more than make up for her lack of experience. That's good. All right, she can do it. And lately, she's become very responsible. What'd you say? I said she can have the job. <laughs> no, but wait a minute. Don't tell her whatever you do. I know that girl. Once you start thanking, there's no stopping. Bon appetit. I should be so lucky. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Cooper. Thank you, Mr. Cooper. Thank you. You won't be sorry. I promise you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's going to be the best class night ever. Well, I'm really gratified by the turnout. You're probably all disappointed that Mr. Rieger won't be your faculty advisor this year, but I'll try to fill his shoes as well as I can. I want you to know, and I mean this, I'm your advisor, and that's all I'll do, advise. I'll give you the benefit of my know-how, but please, I'm not in charge, and I'm not the symbol of authority. I'm here simply to help. But this is your show, yours, and you can do anything you want to do. I'll help, but believe me, it's your show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, let's begin. Richie, take it away. Okay, first tryouts. Magnitudes. You hear magnitudes? Yeah. 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 I was afraid you wouldn't show up. I promised you. Only, I think it's really a big mistake. You'll be fine. I'm never wrong about talent. Broadway hits. No, it's true. Okay, something's wrong. What is it? I can tell. Come on, what's the problem? Miss Johnson, we want to level with you. Sure, didn't I tell you this is your show? That's just it. It's our show, but it's kind of like all the other shows. Just like last year's class night. And the year before. We want our show to be different. Yeah. yeah. Right. I agree. Definitely. Well, we'll have to do something unusual. Something that hasn't been done before. Anybody got a notion? Maybe we can take a look. Yeah. 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 
sight. What was that? Helen, that, that's out of sight. W what'd you say? Hey, that is different. <laughs> Gotta watch them quiet ones. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Helen, do you have an idea? Does she have an idea? Yeah. What was it? I didn't hear. I said... Come on, come on. Come on. Well... Actually, it's not really a new idea. Well, it's new around here. <laughs> <laughs> they do it in a show in New York. I read about it. Well, well what is it? What? You know, you know, know. At the end of the show, everybody in the cast... Well... Yeah. Yeah. Come tell them out. They take off their clothes. Yeah. You see? Yeah. They take off their clothes. Yeah. <laughs> They take off their clothes. <laughs> so as your principal, I felt compelled to call this special assembly. There are still certain members of the student body mm, that still refuse to listen to reason. And I am serving notice that I am not going to tolerate a moment longer the scandalous wearing of miniskirts by the members of the football team. Sure glad to see you, Mr. Kaufman. Always nice to run into you, Mr. Lane. May I inquire what you were doing there? Mr. Kaufman, Richie... <laughs> you were imitating me. Yes, sir. Young man, you're making a very serious mistake. Haven't you ever noticed the rhythm of my speech? The rhythm of my speech? The way it goes up on the end of a sentence? <laughs> Did you ever notice that? Yeah, how did you know that? You'd be surprised what I know. And don't forget the gesture. The gestures are very expressive. I want to see you in my office. <laughs> Zigfeld. <laughs> you know, Miss Johnson, how important the class night program is. What it means to the parents as well as the student body. Yes, of course. But I wonder if you're aware that it may prove to be a crucial night for you. Me? Yes, the progress report on your work at Whitman is due next Monday. Oh. Right after class nine. Yes. So that if the show goes well, it won't do your report any harm. You see? I thought that you should know that. Oh, thank you, Mr. Kaufman. You're welcome. As for myself, I ask very little. After more class nights than I care to remember, I'll consider it a smashing success if I stay awake till the final curtain. Oh, you won't sleep through this one. Oh, you have a few little surprises for us, Miss Johnson? Oh, yes, Mr. Kaufman. Quite a few little surprises. <laughs> one big one. <laughs> Richie's gonna do this impression of Mr. Kaufman. Mr. Kaufman? Yeah, and then <laughs> the magnitudes are gonna sing a song, and then they're gonna undress, stark naked. Alice, you gotta be kidding. I don't think she is. They want their class night to be different. Well, I can't say that I've heard of any other nude class nights. I guess it symbolizes their freedom. I'm almost afraid to ask, but have they rehearsed it yet? No, not yet. Frankly, I haven't had the nerve. Well, Alice, I think you better find the nerve. I know, but I don't know how I can. You see, the worst of it is, you'll never guess whose idea it was. It wasn't me. It was Helen. Helen Loomis? So how could I say no to her? For the first time in her life, she volunteered something. And all the kids think she's so hip and daring coming up with an idea like that. And I just can't take that away from her. What would she think of me? Well, Alice, do you want to be Miss Popularity or do you want to be a school teacher? Pete, wait. Well, that's the choice she's got to make. Because if you want to be a school teacher, once in a while you're going to have to be unpopular. Sometimes kids have to do things that they don't like. That's where a teacher comes in. So maybe you better decide if what you're doing is for them or for you. Well, I understand. Now, she made a promise to them and she doesn't want to break it. Oh, but Alice, you've got to break it. But I always do things like this. Or at least they happen to me. I don't know which. But I want to do right. I really do. In my head, I get an idea, and it seems so wonderful. But when it comes out, it's different, changed. And sometimes it's funny, and I make people laugh. But sometimes what I do isn't so funny, like this time. Why do I always mess up? 
because of the kind of things you go for. Like, how can anyone make a junior class night different? <laughs> but you, you try. And that's why we love you, right, Pete? Sure. That's what this is all about, isn't it? I'll tell him tomorrow. Stand by for dress rehearsal! Stand by, please! And when they finish this song, I put on all the lights, right? Oh, yes, Howie, that's perfect. Just perfect. One other thing. What? You know, uh, when they, uh, when they disrobe, how you want the lights set? Low key. Very low key. Well, why don't I just put them out altogether? I wish we could. I mean, just make them dim. I don't know why I have to take my clothes off, too. Well, they said I did. It's everybody or nobody. Don't you want to? Well, I don't know. If the others don't cop out, I guess I won't either. How do I look? Beautiful. Oh, really? Do I really look nice? You really look beautiful. <laughs> well, now you better take your place on stage. Am I allowed backstage? Oh, hi, Pete. Well, everything's happening, huh? Yeah. Oh, Al. Here. That's better. Thanks, Miss Johnson. Anybody ever tell you you're groovy? Hi, Mr. Dixon. Hi, Al. Well, having told them that the big numbers out doesn't seem to have hurt your popularity any. Yeah, well, Pete, I'm awful busy, so I better get... Alice. Going. You have told them that the nude number's out. Oh, Alice. I want to, Pete, but I just can't. The words won't come out of my mouth. Well, in that case, you'd better force them. A lot of these kids have worked too hard to have their records ruined because you're afraid to hurt their feelings. Their futures are on the line. And you're afraid that they won't think you're groovy. I'm not groovy. I'm not anything. Alice, you can be anything you want. Before we begin the final dress, there's something I have to tell you. Excuse me, Miss Johnson, but before you... Well, the cast has asked me to say something. Lay it on, Helen. Anyhow, when you told us in the beginning, and kept telling us, that this was our show, well, gee, some of us just doubted it a little. After all, you are a teacher. <laughs> but you really meant it. This is our show. Thanks to you. And we just want to say thanks. That's all. Okay, let's get started. Let's put your house on. Come on. Hold it, everybody. Please, quiet. Uh, I've decided, since the run-through was so good, we don't need a dress rehearsal. Yeah. But what we do need is an undress rehearsal. Ms. Johnson, you mean we have to... Right, the finale. Just the way you're going to do it in front of your parents and teachers and Mr. Kaufman and everybody. Well, we want to get it right, don't we? Yeah. yeah. Well, don't we? Yeah. yeah. Good. Okay, uh, Howie. Uh, where's Howie? Right here. Uh, Howie, I changed my mind about the lighting. Instead of low-key lighting, I want you to bring the lights all the way up. Huh? Uh, I want the stage to be just as bright as possible. Okay. Okay, magnitudes, let's take it eight bars from the end. Let's just hear that much now so we know where we are, okay? Let's go. Yes. 
still completely dressed. I'm working on it. <laughs> Bernie, what's your problem? These buttonholes are too small. Come on, Cass. We've got to do better than this. I mean, the audience is going to be home and in bed, and you're still going to be staggering around the stage. Well, what's going on? Well, are you going to take your clothes off or not, huh? <laughs> Miss Johnson, since it was my idea in the first place, well, do you mind? And I think I'm speaking for almost everyone. Do you mind if we, you know, finish like this? I mean, what really matters is that you said we could do what we wanted. And I guess the idea of it is what appealed to us. Okay? Oh, sure. <laughs> I mean, if that's what you want. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's your show. Oh, thank you. Well, maybe we can end the show by just bowing. Yeah. Yeah. I think that will be just fine. Bowing? Hold it. Wait a minute. Bowing? Wait, that's no way to end the show. You have to do something more spectacular than that, more... Let me see, like, um... The school song. Oh. Wait, 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 back, back, down, down. Wait a minute, it's got a lot going for it. The parents love it. It gives them that sense of security they so desperately need. <laughs> How about it? One rousing chorus of the alma mater. It'll send them home smiling. Oh. The alma mater? At Walt Whitman, we consider it dynamite. <laughs> well... Try it, try it. You'll see it's wonderful, just wonderful. Good luck, everybody. Good luck. Housing chorus of the alma mater. It'll send them home soon. How about it? One... Socko ending. <laughs> the school song. Let's try it, everybody. Ready? One, two. A sunlit at the shining tower that's rained against Two. Well, go on, take another one, Bernie. You earned it. Against the sky. Oh, Helen. You were wonderful. Congratulations. Oh, thanks, Mr. Dixon. But it's really Miss Johnson who deserves the credit. Thank you, Helen. But that's not true at all. It's really Miss Johnson who deserves the credit. Do wild impersonations. Oh, that's no big thing. I have all kind of hidden challenges. Anyway, Mr. Johnson's a cool director. Thanks, Richie. Now, wait a minute. Everyone is getting congratulated except me. Don't forget, I'm the one that picked Miss Hit of the Evening Johnson here to produce the show. Yes, you sure did. And I might add, over almost insurmountable objection, most of them mine. Good work. Thank you, Mr. Kaufman. You did a wonderful job. You know, there was one thing I wondered about, though. What? The ending. I mean, I know the alma mater was my idea, but I really thought you might come up with a little more exciting, more original ending. Oh, we did have our own original ending, didn't we? <laughs> well, I, I don't understand, then. Why didn't you use it? Well, uh... Well, uh, we felt that uh, the alma mater was so much, um... so much, uh... warmer! <laughs>
I take that back. It's not such a good morning. Haven't seen you look like that since Monday. Monday was bad. The boiler exploded. Then we got clobbered by Taft at basketball and Lincoln at track. Then the PTA meeting ended up in a riot and I lost my favorite gold filling. But compared to today, Monday was like white Christmas. Oh, come on. Now, it couldn't be as bad as all that. It is worse than all that. Mr. Kaufman. I know what you're thinking. There goes Mr. Doom again. But I'm afraid this time my foul, nasty humor is completely justified. Completely justified? Well, how would your humor be if one of your best teachers, hardworking, resourceful, charming, well-liked, a positive influence on faculty and students alike, might be taken away from you? Matter of fact, how will you feel? I don't get it. Who? Pete! Pete? Pete, two guys are coming to see him today from Automation West about going to work for them. Oh, that's silly. Pete never quit teaching. This is a big offer, Lou. And he'd be working with kids. Does Pete know about this yet? Not yet. But he will. Why should I hire you? Well, I... I you have I, any qualifications? Well, not exactly. You've got a lousy I, record. Yeah, but... Absenteeism, bad grades, fights, a dropout. Now, why should my company take a chance on hiring a kid like you? Because... Yeah? Because... Yeah? Well, I don't know why. All I know is that I can do a good job. Easy, Why do you ask me here if you don't want to help? Easy, Curtis. I'm on your side, remember? Man, you sure put me up tight. Are they going to chew me up that way, Mr. Dixon? No sweat. After me, the real interview is going to seem like a party. You mean they're going to play music and serve drinks, things like that? <laughs> Not exactly, but they're pretty understanding guys. Come on, we better get over there. <laughs> Well, I wonder what's keeping Pete. You know, I shouldn't allow this. And in my own office of that. Good morning. Sorry I'm late. Hello, Lou. How are you? Fine. Pete, I want you to meet my boss. This is Joe Ralston, Vice President of Charge Personnel at Automation West. Hello, how are you? How are you? Gentlemen? If you'll excuse me, I'm going to leave you to plot your foul deed in private. <laughs> Pete, I've been looking forward to meeting you. Lou tells me the great work you've been doing with these dropout kids. Well, it is an important job, and I do the best I can. But you fellas certainly have helped by placing the kids in your plant. My latest candidate is outside. Oh, that's fine. But we'd like to talk to you about something first. Sure. Pete, we're opening branches in 12 cities. And we want to equip ourselves to be able to train over a thousand dropouts a year. Great. A lot of kids could sure use your help. And we'd like you to help us. Sure. What can I do? Pete, we're looking for a dedicated young man who knows kids. A man they can trust. We'd like to offer him a job at Automation West. And we feel that you're the kind of guy we're looking for. It's a wonderful opportunity, Pete. Well, I'm flattered, but I'm a teacher. As strange as it may seem, I actually like teaching. Well, all we're asking is that you consider taking an exam that might lead to your being in charge of our job training program. It's just not what I want. It's a chance to do great work and be rewarded for it. Pete, how many students altogether do you have in your classes? About 150. Well, if you qualify for our job, you could be helping a great many more. And at a salary about three times what you're making now. So please consider it. Okay, I'll think about it. Good. Now, who's this young man you wanted me to meet? His name is Curtis Jameson. He's a good kid. Curtis? Meet Lou Hershey. He'll take care of you. It's my pleasure. Hi. Here, come inside. Thank you. Good luck. Mr. Kaufman, I appreciate you letting me come in like this to talk to Pete. Better here than skulking around in alleys. Do I still have a history teacher? Well, you'll have to ask Pete that one. I'll be talking to you, Pete. Mr. Kaufman. Hi, Mr. Kaufman. Mr. Dixon. Hi, Sarah. So, you're staying or leaving? Right now, I'm going to my first period class. A walker. You see what a nice guy I am to work for? Would that guy walk into your office every morning? No running in the halls, please. Yes, sir. So, did, uh, that make you a good offer? A very good offer. Oh. Pete, 
I wonder if you're aware of some of the fringe benefits offered to employees at Walt Whitman High. Oh, I didn't know there were any. Oh, you'd be surprised. For instance, I can let you have my private parking space right by the back door. And you give up your quick getaways? I'd be surprised the lengths I'd go to to keep you here. <laughs> I won't hold you to anything said in the heat of passion. Um, I hope. You haven't said anything in the heat of passion to those horse thieves like, uh, say, yes. Oh, Pete, am I glad to see you. The bell rang and you weren't here and I was afraid I was going to have to teach class. Uh, not that I was afraid to teach class or anything. I could get rid of her for you. And they're talking to me about being the guy to run the whole operation. That is if I pass the exam, of course. Oh? Wow, that's fantastic. That's very flattering. It's a great opportunity, too. Oh, come on, Pete, you don't want that. Of course not. Do you? What do you mean I don't want it? Well, because you're a teacher. A great teacher. Well, I'd still be working with kids on this job. Why talk about it? You wouldn't quit teaching no matter what they offered you. Macaroni, please. Hey, wait a minute. Aren't you being just a little too quick to write this whole thing off? This might turn out to be something very important to me. I just know you, Pete. If you were like other men, you wouldn't have gone into teaching in the first place. What do you mean if I were ambitious like other men? What I mean is, you just happen to be one of those people who does things because of their ideals. I hope you two resolve your difficulties. Liz, maybe you've got me down as some kind of hero. But it just so happens that I like money. I have this strange habit of using it for things like food, shelter, clothing. I can see to it that you never have to attend another PTA meeting as long as you live. Pete, you're twisting around everything I said and you know it. Ever since I've known you, you've always wanted to be a teacher. How many times have we talked about it? Now all of a sudden you're thinking of quitting? I just can't believe it. Well, whether you believe it or not. Mm -mm. I don't want to argue in public. Well, now she doesn't want to argue in public. Okay, okay. Liz, tonight we've been invited to dinner at the Ralston's. Oh, great. Here goes, the executive treatment. What time? Eight. Oh, that's eight on the nose, okay? Have you ever known me to be late? We don't want Mr. Dixon to split on us. No, I mean all this talk. It's nothing but gossip. Yeah, you're right, Helen. I think he's about to give it to Oh, yeah. Just <laughs> okay, cool it. Dixon's here. Al, yesterday when the bell rang, you were saying that the years before World War I were a lot like today. Now, how do you figure that? Well, the armies were getting bigger and bigger. Now most armies are getting smaller. Yeah, but our weapons are getting more powerful. And just like in those days, everybody says they're just for defense. Well, aren't they for defense? When people build weapons, they always end up using them. Everybody's scared. People have always been fighting. But everybody always says they want peace. Saying ain't doing. Maybe we don't really want peace. Well, how did it work in World War I? President Wilson said he wanted peace, but we ended up in the war. And Woodrow Wilson wasn't even a politician. Richie. I got an important question, Mr. Dixon. What is it? It ain't exactly about World War I. Go ahead. Mr. Dixon, we heard that you were taking another job and leaving while working. Is that true? I appreciate your interest, Richie. But what's that got to do with what we're talking about? We'd sure like to know whether you're leaving us or not. Well, what I want is this class and our textbooks to come out even at the end of the semester. You gonna be here at the end of the semester? Richie, let's get back to Woodrow Wilson. Okay. Before the war, President Wilson had a policy which has a lot to do with right here, now. What was it? It was called Watch for Waiting. Something else, man. Sticking that flat nose in the teacher's business. I wasn't buttoning. You sure wasn't, man. Yeah, but me and him are pretty tight. 
sure, baby. That's why he done gone and asked your permission before he decided to split. It's Dixon ain't gonna leave us. Wanna lay on? What's the matter with you? Don't you like Mr. Dixon? I dig him for a teacher. But you think he's super spread. Baby Dixon just as partial to the smell of green as the next man. Mr. Dixon ain't like that. Don't put him down for grabbing a chance to make it. That's life. He don't care about money. He's a teacher. Oh, man. You smart in class, all right. But you got a lot to learn about people. And you don't think good of anybody. Between me and Dixon, we gonna teach you something. You just wait and see. You look beautiful. Now let's go. I don't know why I'm going through with this. Dinner at the Ralston's, whining and dining you. It's like you're being seduced. Look, Liz, Ralston's with a company that's doing a lot of good, and I am not about to say no. And he wants you to leave Whitman, and I want you to stay. You know, I've gotten kind of used to that funny face of yours coming down the hallway. Liz, we're going to be late. Since I'm against this whole thing, I can't think of one good reason why I should go anyway. Because I want you to. Yeah, I want you to go with me, okay? Okay. Okay. How do I look? Or did you already tell me? I already told you. Now, Liz, let's go. Oh, what did you say when you already told me? I said you look beautiful. Now, let's go, okay? Liz, what is it? I don't know. It's the whole thing. Go into the Ralstons so they can impress you with their skinny sculpture and their 1930 antiques. Look, they're probably very nice people. Look at it that way. Okay, now, come on. Let's go. Okay. Maybe you're right. I might even have a very nice time. But I doubt it. Are you sure you don't want anything stronger than orange juice, Pete? Absolutely. <laughs> you know, I'll bet there are guys who do the minimum required each day, hide behind the law, and race home as soon as the bell rings. But Pete is a real teacher. There are a lot of good teachers. People who care about the kids and do everything they can to help them. Yeah, but if they were all like you, we wouldn't have any need for our dropout program. Right, right. right. And then she said, Miss McIntyre, I don't know what you're talking about, but I'm talking about kissing. Oh. <laughs> this kid, Bobby, I was telling you about, one day in class, he was half asleep, and I happened to mention that my watch stopped. He said he'd fix it, so I gave it to him. You never saw him on the watch again. <laughs> <laughs> no, he took it home with him, fixed it, brought it back the next morning, and it hasn't stopped running since. That's what he likes, fixing things. Cars, watches, anything that moves. Automation West could use a kid like that. But Bobby hasn't dropped out. We got him a part-time job working for a jeweler. A man says that he's almost a genius with his hands. And the most important thing is that he stopped getting into trouble and he doesn't fall asleep in my class anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. And we just about given up on Doris. Fights, stealing, you name it, she did it. She had no home life at all. And I guess she figured if nobody cared about her, why should she care about anybody? Then I got this idea to get her into the nursery school program. Wasn't that dangerous? A girl like that? Well, maybe. But there was something about Doris. Something in her eyes, like a need. Anyhow, after a couple of weeks, she became a different girl. She's great with the children, and they all love her. I'll send you that information tomorrow. Oh, fine. Now, don't tell me you ladies have recruited Liz for one of your causes already. Didn't I hear you talking to Pete about the softball league? That's no cause. Oh, it is with you. <laughs> Good, Good night, dear. Good night. Well, did you enjoy yourself after all? Yeah. You did, too. It was fun. They're nice people. The food was great. Nice life, huh? Yeah, if you can afford it. Good morning. Good morning. Pete, thanks for agreeing to take these tests for us. No obligation either way, right? Right. Well, I have nothing else to add except that the answers are taped underneath the third sink from the left in the men's room. <laughs> and look, take your time. I don't want you to feel you're under any pressure. I've never felt less pressure in my life. Good. 
third thing from the left? <laughs> Dylan. Pete Dixon. Nice setup here. Yes. Very impressive. Well, I'm ready to start if you are. Well, I'm ready. You want me to sit over there? Oh, I'm sorry. Have I taken your seat? Don't you work here? No, I don't work here. Neither do I. I'm just down from San Francisco for the day, kind of looking the place over. Pretty much the same with me. I guess we're just waiting for the same person then, huh? Well, well, I guess we wait. I, I guess so. Uh, you work in electronics? Oh, no, I'm a teacher. You? I'm a teacher, too. You from out of town? Uh, no, I'm from here. I teach history at high school. Here. You? English. Dylan, Mr. Dixon, have you met? Yes. Since you're both scheduled to take the same battery, I thought it might be simpler to test you together. I hope you don't mind. No, not at all. And that is if Mr. Dixon doesn't mind. It's all right with me. I'd enjoy the company. This first part will take 60 minutes. Begin. Hello, Richie. Come in. Say, don't you have a class now? Yeah, history with Mr. Dixon. But he's not there now. No, he's not. But Miss Johnson is. Does she know you're here? I got her permission. Anyway, you know Miss Johnson with her progressive teaching methods. She didn't ask why. Did you want to speak to me? Yeah. It's about Mr. Dixon. Do you think he's going to leave Whitman? I don't know. Why do you ask? Well, to tell you the truth, I'm worried. There's nothing to worry about. If he leaves, Another teacher will teach you history, that's all. But that's not what I'm worried about. Well, then what is it? Well, I just wanted you to know. I mean, I know you and Mr. Dixon. Well, anyhow, I just wanted you to know, in case you get kind of lonely, there's a lot of us kids around here that like you very much. That's all. Thank you, Richie. Gentlemen. Very interesting, huh? Oh, I guess I enjoyed it. You'll be notified of the results as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. You going back to San Francisco today? No, I'm going to be sticking around for another day at least. There's some people here I have to talk to. Yeah, me too. So what was the other guy's exam like? Educated, well-spoken. Seem to have a lot going for him. I've always been a terrible exam taker. When I was a little girl, I used to break out in hives. Maybe your body was trying to tell you something. So, what happened? Is this a farewell lunch? Well, I haven't heard anything since the exam. He's playing it cagey. Oh, they're not pressuring me to make a decision, but my friends... I've been totally objective, despite my true feelings. We've all been totally objective. By the way, did I tell you I'm thinking about putting an air conditioner in your room? Well, I told Lou I'd call him at noon to get the test results. Wish me luck. Here's a dime. Remember, there's more where that came from. Mm. 
Mr. Hershey, please. Uh, Dixon, Pete Dixon. Hello, Lou. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't get it. Okay. Thanks. Well, they gave the job to do it. So, when if you lose a few? Gee, Pete, I don't know what to say. You know something, Alice? Neither do I. As to the questions, at the end of chapter 17, and on Monday we'll start on the First World War. Some of you people who have been so deeply involved in my life might be interested to know that this could be the year that we make it through to the end together. Is that a subtle hint, Mr. Dixon? No, Richie, I'm staying. Thanks, Mr. Dixon. Thanks for what? For sticking with us. I didn't get the job. I took an exam. I guess I could have done better, but somebody else got the job. Look, I'm telling you straight. <sighs> Class is best. You could have done better. You're okay, Mr. Dixon. You good, Helen? You blew it, huh? <laughs> That's right, Jason. I sure did. <laughs> I'm sorry. Thanks. Were you very disappointed? It's always more fun to win. I guess it is. Pete! Oh, hi, Joe. Uh, How are you? Uh, I'm looking for you. I guess I better leave. No, please stay. It's all right with Pete. I, I just want to explain to him personally what happened. Wasn't it a simple case of the better man won? Not quite. You see, those tests told us some very interesting things about you. Do you want to hear? Go ahead. Pete. You don't want to leave Walt Whitman. All you want to do is teach. Those tests showed us that. Working for Automation West would have made you miserable. You happen to be the kind of guy that just doesn't want to be bogged down by too much administration, paperwork, and all that. That's true enough. You want to be right in there with the kids, teaching. Uh, I see. Well, I better be running along. I want to get on that freeway. Hey, Joe, one thing. Yes? About the test, the intelligence section. Yes? Who came out ahead? Pete or that other guy? Come on. No, I want to know. But you're acting like a kid. Maybe, but you don't have to listen, Joe. You won't tell anybody? Promise. Pete came out ahead. Don't you find the test more accurate than ever? Did he win by a lot? Very, very little. Had to ask one question too many, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'll see you, Pete. Hope you like it. Maybe, but you don't have to listen, Joe. Had to ask one question. Uh -huh.